Good morning, Mount Vale. Good morning. Woo, we, we're alive and cooking here at Mount Vale Church of God on a Sunday morning. Brother, can you give me just a little bit more monitor? I can't hear myself up here. I hope you can hear me out there. Um, it's good to see everybody. It's good to be in God's house. Looking for an exciting day today in the Lord. We got a few announcements before we get underway. Today, in uh, the young adult classroom, they are having donuts with dad. That's from 9 to 9.30 this morning. So anybody that's in here can't go because we're still going to be having church. <laughs> Ladies get away on June the 26th through the 28th. All payments need to be uh, in by June the 26th, and the ladies need to meet at the end in the Christmas place at the check-in time at 4 o'clock. Okay. Young adult block party, July 3rd from 6 to 9 at the church. Children's church revival. Where's Becky at this morning? <laughs> July 9th, 10th, and 11th. Uh, Sister Becky is in charge of that, I do believe. And uh, if you see her, she can tell you a little bit more information about it. Camp meeting. I am looking forward to this. The second annual camp meeting. Here comes Sister Becky right now. Uh, August the 9th through the 14th. Tommy Bates is going to be here. Uh, our Bishop Wayne Doherty, uh, District Overseer, will be here, and several others. Uh, yeah, P. Douglas Small, uh, Teresa Arwood. Joel's not going to be here, right? Michael Addison. Okay. She is a wealth of information. <laughs> okay. We are so looking forward to this. This is going to be the second time we've done this, our second annual uh, uh, camp meeting. So it's, 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 it's an exciting time in the Lord, that's for sure. Girl, God's Amazing Girls Princess Tea Party is on August the 29th from 2 to 9 at the Carriage House. Tickets are $15 or two for $25, and the deadline to register is 8:23 at the Connections Desk or on the Church Center. Sister Becky, tell us about the Children's Revival. I got to get my microphone this morning. Sorry, I'm running late. Um, our Children's Church Revival is July the 9th through the 11th. We're going to be having a service, and our worship team is going to be doing our worship. And me and Miss Whitney will be bringing the messages. So we're excited. I can't wait. And we're just hoping and praying that we'll have a lot of kids. We're going to have it in Children's Church. I've already asked, and they're going to bring the music over for us so we can have it in Children's Church. So we're excited. So be please be in much prayer and invite. We've got some flyers if you'd like some flyers to hand out. So thank you, guys. Becky's preaching. Cool. How many want to hear Becky preach over here? <laughs> it, uh, I've, I've been honored for, for years to do that. Any announcements that I've missed? Anything? Okay. What she said. Looking forward to the message this morning. How many know that this, uh, this service was uh, pretty much built and centered around a uh, stepping block for new preachers? That's the whole purpose and intent of this. So we've got a new preacher going to be preaching this morning. So his first time, I'd say he's a little nervous. I told him last week, I said, the first time that I ever got behind the pulpit, I had 10 pages of notes, and I went through them in five minutes. It's scary when you get up here the first time. But if you let God take over, you're in good shape. Let's all stand as we go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Are you ready to worship the Lord? Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. We give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you all the glory for what you're doing in our lives, Lord. Lord, we thank you for each and every blessing that comes from your throne. Lord, we ask you to be with us this morning. We, we invite you in. Have your will, have your way, Lord, in your house. And let us always remember to be respectful that this is your house. Lord, move as only you can. If there be any sick among us, Lord, touch and bring healing. If there be a need in this house, Lord, you've got the answer. We believe that with all that is in us. Lord, just move upon the minister this morning. Give him the power and the might to preach your word. 
And it's in the blessed holy name of Jesus that we ask all things. And the church said, Amen.
Can I have anybody in here excited this morning? About amazing grace. Amazing grace. I've been thinking about that all week, how amazing His grace is. Who are we, or who were we, that the King of all kings, the King of all glory, would love us so much that He would come and go through all the things that He went through just for me and just for you when we didn't deserve it. When we didn't, we didn't care who He was when we were out in sin. Did you ever think about Him? when, Maybe when we got in trouble or something. Or maybe when we needed a healing or something. Maybe that was when we thought about Him. When things was going wrong in our life. But I never really thought about Jesus when I was out in sin because I was having too much pleasure in sin for that season. But now I don't know how. I don't know how I made it without my Lord and Savior. I'm so thankful today that I serve Him. That I love Him. All because He first loved me. Thank you, Jesus, for your love. Hallelujah.
invite anybody else, but I could use some fresh fire sometimes. Amen? Amen. In this world that we live in, the stress, the chaos, all the things that the enemy's got going on, I can use some freshness sometimes from the Lord. Amen?
with his blood. He bought me this new cold. You now see me where? Well, I tell you this. that new coat on this morning for those watching by Facebook that don't understand the meaning of that song let me just use me as an example many years ago I wore an old coat an old me that was lost in sin that was dead to everything spiritual had no life within me and then one day, I took that old coat off. I took the old man off when I met Jesus Christ and I put Amen. on the new. Yes. Saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost on my way to Hallelujah. heaven. When he comes back, and he's coming back, yes, I'm going with him. Yes. What about the rest of y'all? Can we give him a hand, clap of praise this morning? <laughs> Woo! New beginnings. We got a new preacher this morning. We've also got somebody new taking up the offering. I told her, I sat in the in the back back here for six years when I first started at that at this church. Hid back in the in the sound booth for six years. My wife sat over here on one of the rows in the back. We were here about two or three years, and people would still come up to her and thank her for visiting and welcome her back. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she'd look at me after service and just kind of chuckle. But one day call, God called me out of that back sound booth. And he had something else for me to do. And I told her to be careful because she's sitting in the same chair I was sitting in. Sister Jessica, come take up the tithe and the offering this morning. I'm so out of my comfort zone this morning <laughs> that God asked me to do this today, so that's what I'm going to do. In 2 Timothy 4 and 2, it says, Preach the word. Be instant season and out of season. I'm sure out of season right now. <laughs> Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. I want to go ahead and uh, lead us in prayer. But first, I want to say Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out here today. Okay, I'll go ahead and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we come to you, Lord Jesus. We just ask that you just be with Robbie, Lord, as he brings forth the word, Lord Jesus. That you use him in a mighty way, Father God. That you just give him peace that passes all understanding and lead him and guide him, Father God. And I just ask that you just be with each and every one, Father, that is here today, Lord, and that is on Facebook, Father God. I just ask that you just move upon lives, hearts, Lord Jesus. If someone needs to be set free, delivered, Father God, that you do that today, Father God. I speak life upon each and every one, Lord. I plead the blood over each and every one, Father God. And Lord, we thank you for this day, and we do thank you for our fathers, Father God. And we thank you, Lord, for each and everything that you've done for us, Father. And I just ask that you just be with us, service, Lord, in Jesus' precious blood. Amen.
Can we worship the master this morning? He is the master. He is the good shepherd. He sits upon the throne of our hearts and he leads us and he guides us in all things that are righteous and good for him. I want to welcome all our visitors this morning. It's good to see some back that haven't been here in a while. And uh, I guess it's uh, God moves in strange and mysterious ways sometimes. And uh, I thank him for that. Brother, come up here. I want to do something. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus this morning. Each and every one of you, stretch your hands this way. Father, we ask you to move upon our brother as he steps behind the sacred desk, Lord, as he answers the calling that you've put upon his heart. Lord, we ask you to give him strength and guidance, Lord, and we ask you for that special anointing that you have just for him, just for him, not for no other speaker, Lord, not for no other preacher, but you've got a special anointing just for this man, Lord, and I ask you to just pour it out upon him at this time. Lord, I ask you to move upon this congregation and those watching by Facebook this morning that they would receive of this man and that they would just take the word and, and let it hide in their hearts, Lord. Lord, we ask all this in the blessed, holy name of Jesus. Amen. Make Brother Robbie welcome this morning. Good morning. First thing, I want to wish everybody a happy Father's Day, and uh, I'd like to I'd like to thank uh, Pastor Richard for uh, giving me this opportunity. I would like to thank uh, Pastor Pastor Farrell, um, our assistant pastor Philip Ruth, and. Uh, I've got a message for you this morning, and it's uh, this message is this whole message is basically based out of John uh, chapter three verse sixteen, and and um, I've got um, another scripture out of um, out of Genesis where he created man in his image. And I'm going to try to, with the uh, Holy Spirit's help, I'm going to try to marry these two scriptures together. And I also had a vision uh, several years back before me and my wife and my kids come back to Mount Vale. And I wanted to share that with you guys this morning. The Holy Spirit gave me three points or three meanings of what Jesus' posture meant when he was hanging upon the cross. And I want to share that with you guys. But we're going to start off uh, with the reading of God's Word. So if everybody would stay in please. And we're going to start off with uh, reading uh, John chapter 3, verse 16. So if you have your Bibles, turn to that, that chapter. And um, you guys don't have to, you can just remain on that. And, uh, but it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Uh, Sister Jessica, if you would, put Genesis up. And then it says, in Genesis, it says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female, he them. And that's where I was going to start at this morning. Um, you know, there's a song I like. You may be seated. Or... <laughs> Um, 
there's a song I like to uh, listen to, and it really ministers to me. And you guys have probably heard it. Uh, it's by Johnny Diaz, and it's called uh, They Could Never Be a More Beautiful You. And, you know, the, the Spirit has really laid that here last week, coming up to my message. He's really put that on my heart. Uh, everybody is created for a purpose, a uh, purpose for something in the Lord, you know. It could be uh, a preacher, it could be a, a, a Sunday school teacher, it could be a missionary, people that have a heart for other people, a missionary, you know, that's, that's the way to go. And uh, it's just, <laughs> excuse me, there's different you know, everybody's created for a purpose. You know, I hear people say, off and on sometimes they say, uh, well, I'm a mistake. Or they think they're a mistake. And you know, depression, that's where depression comes in. That's where, you know, you have suicidal thoughts and things like that. The devil makes you feel like you're unworthy. You're not, you're not special or whatever in the sight of God. But in this scripture... It says he created everybody in his image and in his likeness. And then I thought upon the potter's wheel. You know, the potter's wheel, if, if you've ever watched movies or anything of them using the potter's wheel, they use their hands to break down the clay and shape it and form it into what they want it to be. And that's... That's what God does in our spirits and in our lives. He creates us. He forms us into what he wants us to be. You know, um, but, you're, you know, people's not a mistake. God don't make mistakes. God don't. You know, you may say, well, what about when they're using the potter's wheel and they have to break the clay back down and build it back. You know, God has to do that sometimes to us. He does spiritually. Sometimes He has to break us down to our, to our lowest point. Sometimes He has to put us in life to where, places and situations in life to where we can't call on mom, we can't call on dad, we can't call on no family members to help us. I mean, he will put us sometimes to get our attention in places to where we have to call on him. We have, we have to call on our creator. You know, and, uh, but you know, I was, I was thinking about that. We don't, God don't make mistakes. We make mistakes. We make mistakes in our walk with him. Uh, we're the reason why that he has to rebuild us back up. You know, we're the reason why sometimes he'll take us to our lowest valley to build us back up into what he would have us to be, you know. But, you know, that song, it really ministers to me. They could, be, they could never be a more beautiful you. Everybody's created for a purpose. Everybody's created for a reason, you know. And I like what Pastor always says, there's one thing we can all do. Even if we don't know what our walk in Christ is right now, we can all be uh, witnesses to the lost, and, you know, to the dying people. We can all be witnesses unto them. And uh, it says in the book of uh, Jeremiah, chapter 18, verse 4, and the vessels that he made of clay was marred, which means marred basically means they were they were not they weren't usable. They were, you know, uh, dirty. They were filthy, just like our you know our walk sometimes gets with the Lord. It gets you know we step out of His will. Uh, we get out of church. You know, and the, the the more things we do to step out of God's will or out of the church and places like that, things like that, the further away we get from Him. And then sometimes, you know, you get comfortable. 
you get so far out away from him, you're, you're comfortable. And then you think, well, I'm living right. You know, I'm, I'm doing everything. The Lord, you know, I'm living right. But, you know, I pray, God, I pray to God that we don't ever get comfortable. We never get comfortable in situations like that. You know, but God created us all for, for a purpose, for a reason. Um, so he made uh, it again. You know, right there it's talking about, you know, you know, we, we fall sometimes, we come short, but he'll 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 pick us up, he'll dust us off, he'll you know, if we turn back to him and you know we walk with him, he'll uh he'll order our, our footsteps, he'll walk before us, you know. And um in Psalms one thirty nine fourteen I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Uh, marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. You know, God uh, made you, you know, wonderful. You know, he made you uh, in a marvelous way. You know, people, they just... I just can't, you know, I can't get off of that, you know. I I hear some people don't say it, but they think it sometimes, I think a lot of times. Is I'm a mistake, you know. I'm 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 a mistake in the Lord, you know. I don't, you know, God don't make mistakes. God, you know, that's something we all have to remember. And maybe this message that I'm fixing, I'm I'm in the process of delivering, maybe it's not for nobody in the sanctuary. Maybe it's for somebody on social media. But, you know, I've had this message on my heart since before the coronavirus. The Holy Spirit started giving me Scripture as I was studying the Scriptures on it. He, he you know, I told, I told somebody back there a while ago, this is his message. It's not mine. I mean, I can, I, it's been my first message. I've never experienced anything like that. I've always heard people say, you know, that preach, the Holy Spirit will help you. But, you know, he's given me everything for this message. Everything. Um, uh, sister, if you would, please put up my next uh, verse. Okay. It says, for Adam was first formed, then Eve, First Timothy. Chapter 2, verse 13. Uh, the Bible says that Adam was formed of the dust of the earth. And God breathed into his nostrils. He became a living being. And then um, he, created, um, he created Eve. And what he did was he fell, at, he put Adam into a deep sleep. He took a rib out of Adam and created Eve. And um, the reason why a woman was created, the Bible said, was to be a helpmate, to be a helpmate for, uh, for man. And um, I was thinking about that, you know, and studying upon that. Um, if you would, put my next scripture up. Okay. It says, But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent bequealed Eve through his subtility, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Okay. Um, bequealed means to deceive. He deceived Eve. He deceived her to eat of the eat of the forbidden fruit tree. And you know the Lord told him as he was in the as he was in the garden with them. He said, "You can partake. You can eat of any of these trees except the one in the center. And the one in the center was called the tree of knowledge. And you know I could just picture." You know, 
the, the uh, serpent talking to Eve and Adam on that day and he, you know, filling them. You know, the devil makes things sound enticing, makes things sound good, makes things look good in our lives, you know. And, you know, he make, that's his job. He makes sin look good, makes it sound good. And, uh, you know, like somebody said, you know, he gives the power. A pastor always says, all he's got is the power of suggestion. And then he's hoping that when he entices you with these things that's corrupt, that's of the world, he's hoping that you'll, you'll fall for them. You'll, you know, partake in them. But I could just imagine what the serpent probably told Adam and Eve on that day. He probably told them, you know, he's making it sound enticing, making it sound real good. He's probably telling them, he's probably saying, you know, if you partake of this tree, uh, you'll be smart. Uh, might even told them that they'd be smarter than Jesus. Making it sound real good. Making it sound enticing. And um, then on top of that, you got Adam and Eve, probably while he was talking to them, they're staring at this uh, fruit tree, and it's probably got big old pieces, you know, of juicy fruit upon it, you know, and things of that nature. So it looks enticing. It looks good to them. But we all know, you know, we can't follow the ways of man. We need to follow the ways of the Spirit. If we follow the ways of the man, we're going to be right back out into the world. We're going to be led astray and led right back out into the world. And, um, but another uh, thing he, he said, uh, a subtility. Subtility means slyness. Slick. He was sly. He was, you know, making it sound good. He was uh, making it, you know, sound like, oh, you know, they ain't nothing, nothing's going to become of this if you eat of this fr uh, fruit tree. Uh, I think he even told him, he said, you know, surely not. Surely, surely, surely the Lord didn't tell you that you couldn't partake of that tree. You couldn't eat of that tree. When they eat of that tree... And they partook of that fruit. It opened sin up in this world and made sin abound. That's why we have to go through some of the stuff we have to go through, like death, uh, separation, uh, snakes. That's why we have snakes and different things of that nature because they partook of that fruit tree. And, um, but... It says he bequilled them. Uh, he makes he makes sin look good, makes it sound good, and you know there's different circumstances in our lives in sin that you know that look good, that sound good. Um, you know I always hear about trials and uh, tribulation. They only last for a season. Well, you know I got to thinking the other day. Sometimes sin's that way. I mean. The sin's always there, but like, say you step out of your marriage covenant with your wife. Uh, the serpent makes the sin look good, makes it look good. And then it's, it's good there for a while. But then after a, after a certain period of time, it's owed to you. It's not fun no more. It's not exciting. Then here you have, you've stepped in sin. It don't take the sin away. You've still sinned. You're still a sinner, you know. You still need to repent. It don't take the sin away. The sin's still there. And then in some cases, you may wish, you know, I wish I, I wished I had my wife back. I wish I had my husband back. And then, you know, it's, it's you know, it's, it's too late. So, it's just not, it's, it's not worth it, you know. Um, sister, put my next scripture up. <clears throat> okay, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish 
but have everlasting life. You know, I read this scripture, and I've read it, and we always, you know, John 3.16, there's, there's things that, it's such a familiar scripture to us that I know with me, there's other things I can think of that draws me to that, and, you know, makes me think of that. And then that makes me think of, but, you know, I was thinking in the Bible when I read this about sacrifices. Uh, the Lord put that in my mind, and I was thinking about the animal sacrifices in the Bible that they sacrificed unto the Lord and how they had to be without spot, without blemish. And I was thinking about that. And without spot and without blemish, in case some of you don't know what that means, that means they had to be uh, without a scratch. They couldn't be sick. They couldn't uh, be lame or, you know, have a broke leg. They had to give their best out of, you know, if they was going to offer a lamb unto the Lord, and they had 19, 20 lambs in their, as their flock, they had to pick the best one they had out of that flock to offer unto God. You know, well, I was thinking, you know, a little over 2,000 years ago, there was another sacrifice made. And it was made for you and me. And it was, it was without spot. It was without blemish. It was without spot. It was without blemish. The Bible said uh, he knew no sin. He knew no sin. But because he loved us so much, he took my sin, he took your sins, he took the world's sin, and put it upon his shoulders and led it to the cross. And as he hung on that cross, so there did our sins hang. He hung, our, he hung our sins on that wooden cross. And, you know, it says in the book of, and I don't know how to pronounce this word in the Bible, um, in the book of, uh, I think it's called Habakkuk, whatever. Um, in uh, chapter 1, it talks about... Um, It talks, it talks about uh, the father had to turn away. He had to look away from his son being crucified upon the cross. Because when he looked upon the son, he did not see the son. He, 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 he resembled unto the father my sin. He resembled your sin. He resembled the sins of the world. And, you know, sometimes... I think about offering, you know, why wouldn't anybody want to give to the Lord? Not that any of us don't, but why would they not want to give to the Lord? Look what the Lord gave us. And, you know, he, give, he, give his, he, he didn't give his best. He gave his very best. And I was just thinking about that in relation to back in the Bible and all these animal sacrifices where, you know, people in the Bible were offering animal sacrifices unto him and then here he came and he offered his son as a sacrifice to us and you know I, I thought about that and um, but some of the things they did to Jesus um, they spit upon him uh, they mocked him um, you know ridiculed him uh, beat him and all different kinds of things. Um, they told him, they told him why he was up on the cross. They told him, they said, uh, if you be, uh, if you be the king, uh, or if you be uh, God's son, come get yourself down off that cross. You know, if he had got himself down off that cross, which he could have done it, he had all power. But if he had got himself down off that cross. Me and you would have been in a miserable state. But see, he didn't come to the world to prove. He told them. He told them before he went to the cross. He told them. He said, I am the son of, the, the son of God. 
They didn't believe him. They did not believe him. And so now he's hanging on the cross, and they, they asked him that. You know, they asked him. They said, um, you know, if you be the son of God, get yourself down off that cross. But let me tell you something. He didn't come to the world to prove to them visually that he was who he said he was. He come to the world and entered in this world in human flesh as a child to save his creation. His creation is me and you. He came to save us. He came to save, he came to save us from a devil's hell. He came to save us from death. So that's the reason that the Lord came to the earth, came to the world, is to save his creation, to save you and I from destruction, from our sins. Um, sister, if you would please put my picture up on the board. Several years ago, I told you guys I had a vision. Um, I was standing in my wife's uncle's church. It was on Sunday night. We were standing, we were praying. I got deep in prayer. And I don't know, it may be different for everybody when you get the Holy Spirit. But when I got the Holy Spirit, and I was first baptized in it, it was, you know, in the book of Acts, it talks about a rushing mighty wind. Well, that's what it felt like within my spirit. It was like a, like a tornado that just sat there and just spun. And then as I was praying, it come up and then come out of my mouth. It started moving up and come out of my mouth. Well, as it came out of my mouth, it was in tongues. I was speaking in tongues. Well, that's the way I felt when I got this vision. And I thought, oh, wow, he's going he's gonna, to you know, refresh me in the spirit. I was excited. I thought that's what it was. And I got deeper in prayer. And then instead of speaking in tongues, he gave me a vision. In this vision, I saw Jesus. I saw him hanging on the cross. And when I seen him, he was basically like that right there. He had, he had done, he had done died upon the cross. Behind him, the sky was dark. Behind him and the cross, the sky was dark. I seen about two or three flashes of lightning. The whole time, the Holy Spirit's speaking to me. And he's, ref he's, he's, he's quoting John. But he don't quote the whole scripture of John. What he quotes is, For God so loved the world. And he kept, he kept saying that over and over again. For God so loved the world. For God so loved the world. Then finally he spoke to me. He told me, I've got a message for everybody here this morning. I've got a message for everybody on social media. He said, he didn't say tell my people. He said tell the people. That's everybody. Sinners, saints alike. He said tell the people. He said that God loves them. And that's what he told me. Well, on in, the, on in it, he gave me three points or three meanings of what it meant when Jesus was hanging on the cross. Okay, the first one he gave me, he actually gave me as I was in, as I was experiencing the vision he gave me. The other two he gave me, I had done come out of the vision. I done had the vision. But I had my mind upon what he had told me, what he had said to me when I experienced having the vision. And then he popped the other two right into my mind that coexist with this. He told me the first one, and he gave me an example. He said, a lot of people have seen Jesus hanging on the cross. He said, they've got pictures of Jesus, maybe, hanging on the cross on their walls at home. He said, with Scripture 
you know, saying different scriptures and things like that. He said some people have emblems. They have necklaces with a cross with Jesus hanging on the cross. He said, but I'm going to show you something today that nobody's ever thought of when it's relation to Jesus and the cross. And like I said earlier, you know, I know we, we see this, we think of John. We, we, we hear John, we see this. But he told me, he said, think about when you were a kid. And he said, when you went over to your grandparents' house, and he said, you walk in to visit. He said, your grandfather gets down on one knee, and he hugs you. And he says, and you know, we, we all know this as kids. You know, we exaggerate sometimes and things like that. But he says, how, uh, your grandfather says, how much do you love me? Then a kid will hold out his hands this far. And then he'll say, this much. He'll say, more than the whole wide world. Jesus' arms are a symbol, meaning the world. It means the world. The second one he gave me was along the same principles. When you go to that loved one's house and you walk into their house, they hug you. A hug, just like Jesus' arms are stretched out, a hug is also the meaning or the symbol of love. Jesus' arms mean love. They mean love. And Sister April, you can come on up. I'm fixing to close. I got one more I'm going to give to you. This one more I'm going to give to you, I'm going to back it up with Scripture. This exact word, to the best of my knowledge, is not in the Bible. But we, we do hear it in sequence of different things that Jesus has said. The last one, when you go into somebody's, into your loved one's house, they give you a hug. It's to, it's, 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 they know you're not there. They know your family, but they know you're not there to steal from them or nothing like that. A hug is a semblance of welcoming. Jesus' arms is a sign of welcome. Now, I'm going to tell you, he welcomes you to the cross. He welcomes you to the cross. In his word, he says, um, whosoever will, let him come. And I've got another scripture out here in Mark chapter 8, verse 34. It says, and when he held... When he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Now I know through this life, like I said, our cross sometimes gets heavy. It gets hard to bear. There's times that we lay it down. But God's saying, pick it back up. Follow me. Come with me. You know, I can picture Jesus at the foot of the cross with the cross behind him, and he's motioning for you. Come back to me. I did this all for you. You were worth it to me. You were my creation. You were worth it to me. But he's first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open these altars up. I'm going to open them up for anybody who's laid their cross down. Anybody who wants to come up and pray. Uh, you, need, you need blood. You need the blood, more of the blood applied to your life. It's at the cross. You need salvation. It's at the cross. You need mercy. It's at the cross. You know, that's where it all started. It's where it all started for you at the cross. So, 
I'm going to open the altars up for anybody who needs to pray. We'll pray with you. If you need to pray for any reason, I'm going to, I'm going to ask also anybody who hasn't been to the cross, anybody who hasn't been to the cross, come up, we'll pray with you. Kneel down at the altar and pray. But we will pray with you and for you. If anybody needs prayer, come on. It all started at the cross. It's all at the cross. You couldn't be where you are today in your walk with Christ if it hadn't have started for you at the cross and you asked Him into your heart, into your life at the cross that's where it started it started at the cross it really started when He came to the world and He hung and died on the cross for all of us then the veil was torn and we had access unto the Father. He is our intercessor, which means He is our high priest. He, 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 he's like our lawyer. When we fail, when we do wrong, we ask Him for forgiveness. He takes it to the Father, unto the Father on our behalf. But if anybody needs prayer, now I'll pray with you we pray at the altars I do have one thing that I want to say Testing. Okay. I had something I wanted to say before I turned the service back over to uh, my wife or Pastor Richard or whoever. You know, today's Father's Day, and as everybody knows, I lost my dad uh, back earlier this year. And, uh, not too long after dad died we were sitting in the living room down there and I was sitting on the couch and my wife was sitting in a recliner we was facing each other she was talking to somebody on the phone and she told them she looked at me and she, as she was telling them she said you know she said Robbie's dad said and he don't know this Robbie's dad said when he was still here that one day he was coming to the church and that he was going to listen to me preach and he was going to listen to Robbie speak. Last Sunday, I was out in the foyer 
Richard come to me and he told me he said he told me he said just as simple as this he said you've got next Sunday and smiled and told me that and I smiled back and I told him I said well I said all I've been doing is waiting on you that's what I told him I knew it was coming I didn't know when but Monday or Tuesday rolled around, rolled, rolled around last week and I got off work and I was sitting there I had Father's Day on my mind and I thought I think Father's Day is this Sunday I think Father's Day is this Sunday but I ain't for sure but I'm about for sure it is I'm going to ask Della Della will know because you know she's she knows it all so so I asked her and she said yeah she said this she said this father's this Sunday's Father's Day and then I laughed I looked and I laughed and I smiled and I thought ain't that ironic dad made that statement I didn't know he made it Richard asked me to preach and it's on Father's Day of all days so I know that God this morning has allowed my dad to look over the banisters of heaven and see me preach his word this time guys I'm going to relinquish this rest of this service over to my wife and I'd like to thank you give him a hand clap of praise isn't God good this morning he done awesome this morning you would have never known he was his first message that shows you he studied and he studied and I can I can I can vouch for that because I live with him, and you know, what he was saying this morning, he lives what he was talking. And you know, the, the points that he said about the cross, I would, I never had thought of it that way. And that's the reason why God gives the ministers different things on sometimes the same subject, because he wants to tell you different things and different aspects of it. And I thank God that that one day that he did go to God, God, that he did go to the cross and stretched his arms and said, I love you this much. Like we tell our kids, I love you this much to the moon and back and around the world. And Jesus proved it because he died on that cross for us. And I thank God for that this morning. Uh, we have uh, uh, Father's Day gifts out uh, in the back. Don't forget, if you do not go to the 1030 service, please come back here and see me or my daughter before you leave the sanctuary. If you go to the 1030 service, then we'll, we'll give it to you over at the 1030 service. And we'll just if your dad is living today, tell him Happy Father's Day. Tell him how much you love him. If he's not, just say thank you, God, for the best father that you could have gave me. I thank God for my father. I thank him for my heavenly father. I wouldn't be where I'm at now without them. And I know you're the same. Let's stand and go before the Lord in prayer. Dear precious Heavenly Father, God, we thank you, God, for this day. This is a very special day, God. We thank you, God, for it. I thank you, God, for what you're doing in my family and in, my, and in our lives, God. God, you have fulfilled the dream that you had gave me many, many years ago. That one day he would be in the pulpit doing your work, God. And here he was today. And I know that.